Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into energy resources. So in the last chapter, we learned about the different forms which energy can exist, like kinetic, GPE, so on and so forth. But in this chapter alone, we look, we'll look into the source of this energy. Where do they come from? And what are different types of energy sources? So here, just uh, some information about the energy that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of it comes from the sun, but then we actually didn't use most amount of it, meaning some of the energy that we use, they don't come directly from the sun. So here is a graph. I got it from Google, which is the total energy consumption in Canada. So you can see that we use different types of energy from natural gas, petroleum, hydroelectric, some use nuclear, coal, and so on and so forth. So here are the two branches of energy, renewable and non-renewable. I'm going to look briefly into what each of how each of them works. So first one, solar pan solar energy. So I believe all of us know what a solar panel is. They basically capture sunlight and then convert these lights into electricity. And some of this solar panel will absorb energy and the water inside of it will heat up and it will be used for washing and also central heating, especially in um country that experiences winter season. And solar panel is made up of many solar cells, which is an electrical device that can convert energy from the sunlight into electricity, producing a voltage when light falls on it. So here are some of the advantages and disadvantages. I included it here because these are some of the questions that Cambridge will likely ask you to answer in your exam. The advantage of solar energy is that it's doable in remote locations, especially when energy electricity is very rare. They are also used to power spacecraft. But then it's very unreliable because the intensity of sunlight is will vary. For instance, in Malaysia, sometimes it will rain pretty frequently. So if it rains, you're not going to get the energy you like. And a large area of solar panels is required to capture all the energy and they can be quite expensive. Second, wind power. Wind power, to your surprise, some of you might not know, is that it also caused by the effects of sun because suns heat up some of the air and then and um, because of the convection law, hot air rises, and that creates convection current, which is the wind. So we know that wind power can be used for multiple things. They can be used in a windmill to do grinding and pumping, whereas a wind turbines can be used to generate electricity. So the advantage is that it's renewable. It does not contribute to global warming. There's no like air pollution. But then the disadvantage is very similar to the solar energy. It sound quite reliable because it needs wind and the speed of wind can vary and that would affect the amount of energy we get and so it can be very noisy and you might also need a bigger space to install all these wind turbines and that might not be very land efficient if you are staying in a small country like you know malaysia or singapore so next one hydroelectric city water store behind the dam is released to turn turbine which makes generators spin to produce electricity so they basically use water flow to create energy and the turbine um, so the water here we use to turn the turbines and as a the turbine will then turn the generator to create electricity we'll learn more about that in electromagnetic induction but then for now you just need to know that it is the energy is created using the flow of water so the advantage is that it's a safe clean reliable way and there's a short startup time and the disadvantage will be uh, wildlife habitat might get replaced because it's very hard to survive here if you are the fish and you no know, water hitting at you you just can't survive right so that's hydroelectric another renewable energy is biomass fuel like wood and wood is made of tree and shrubs and then they are used in a lot of the applications in life warm their house cook and biofuel sometimes also include animal dunks and biogas basically the um, stuff that they do and generated by rotting vegetable matter. So advantage is renewable and does not contribute to global warming. And the disadvantage would be um, it might not be very healthy to you if you burn all this biofuel at home. So next one, wave power. Waves are formed by friction between wind and water. When the wind um, sort of heat the water, it creates wave and that would create um, power because you know moving wave will likely have kinetic energy. So again, you can see that wind wave power is also 
um, contributed by the sun because without the sun there wouldn't be wind and therefore wouldn't be any wave. So advantage renewable, disadvantage because height of wave can vary. Last one is geothermal. This is interesting because um, this is the energy that you got from the interior of the earth because um, the interior is hot. If we use it, we can get it. So um, they are found usually at the shallow depth of the earth surface. So that's about it for renewable energy. And let's look into some of the non-renewable energy, which um, we should be quite familiar with. Um, fossil fuels, they are hydrocarbon when burned with oxygen in the air to produce energy. Some of the example of fossil fuels like oil, coal, and also gas. They're not renewable. Once you use up, it's gone. And one important thing about coal is that some people might be worrying, um, what happened if coal will, you know, just run out, we run out of coal. And if we think about it, even though it's not renewable, but running out of coal might be a good thing because um, some of this will produce air pollution, so which is not something we want. So if you think about it from another perspective, sometimes the running out of this energy means they sort of force humana to discover more renewable energy sources that, and that will make the world a better place. So fossil fuels come from actually dead living things. So let's read. The trees died and fell into swampy ground. They did not rot completely because there was inefficient oxygen. The materials built up on top of the ancient tree and the pressure of them increased. So after millions of years, these dead living things, they sort of get compressed and become underground reserve for coal. So burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide. So these are some of the disadvantage and they also produce sulfur dioxide which lead to exit rain. Therefore, that's, that's why I said, if even if we run out of coal one, one day, it might be a good thing to the earth. And yeah, that's about it. So another form of a uh, non-renewable energy is nuclear fuel. The fuel of nuclear power station in uranium, and they are basically a radioactive, um, they will undergo radioactive decay and they are very concentrated energy stored. So that's what happened, to give you a glimpse, this is a process called nuclear fission, which one atom, they sort of split into two other atoms with um, rep respective nucleus. So, um, and then during the splitting process, let's read the definition of nuclear fission. The process by which energy is released from nuclear fuel by the splitting of a large heavy nucleus into two or more smaller nuclei. And the reason energy is released here is because before the splitting process, this particle here, they're actually um, connected by an invisible internal energy, the force chemical bond. So when it's released, this energy is also released. And that's how we get the re um, energy that we want by burning for nuclear fuel in the nuclear power station. So the advantage is that it's relatively cheap, concentrated resources. But then it's expensive to build the power plant there. So that's a disadvantage. And here is a, um, a, an illustration of how both hydroelectric dam, how power station, how nuclear power station um, work to produce electricity. So first of all, depending on what you use, let's say you use coal, and, then, and when you burn it, um, you will burn also the water. And when you burn water, you're going to create steam that helps to turn this turbine and which in fact will turn the generator and at the end of the day um, we'll get the electric city we wanted and if we were to change this part into you know water flow in a hydroelectric dam the process will work the, basically the same thing so the water flow is going to turn the turbine and the turbine is going to turn the generator and the generator will generate electricity same goes to Instead of coal, you could also use nuclear fuel. Okay, as I said, they release tons of energy. All right, so um, when deciding which res energy resources to use, we need to think about the following factors, whether the resources is available, whether we can scale it, environmental impact, whether they are reliable, like the solar energy that we um, studied just now, it wasn't just that good. So cost and also renewability, whether we can use it again and again. Um, like fossil fuels, we can't really use it again. Once it's gone, it's gone. So let's look into some of the energy from the sun. So most of the energy we can use actually trace back to the radiation from the sun. Um, I'll give you a few examples. So for example, fossil fuels. 
we know that they are an accumulation of dead living things and then once they are buried and they are compressed millions of years they become fossil fuels but then um, we know that dead living things without the sun they probably wouldn't survive therefore one fossil fuel they are actually stores of energy that came from the sun millions of years ago second example would be the solar energy which is pretty straightforward they convert sunlight into electrical energy and that's how we get um, energy from the sun third example would be the wind energy whereas the sun heat some heat up some of the air particles that causes convection current which result in wind flowing and that's how we get um, our energy lastly is the um, hydroelectric power this might not be very um, obvious so basically the sun causes the water to evaporate eventually form clouds and then when rain falls it causes water to flow and when water flows they turn the turbine in the electricity um, generator and that create electricity so that's how um, these energies are coming from the sun too. They might not be very obvious, not very direct, but they are the truth. So um, let's look into how the sun produces its energy because eventually it's the source of so many energy that we use. Let's understand how the sun creates energy. And um, the sun creates its energy via a process called nuclear fusion. The process by which energy is released when two small light nuclei join together to form a hev new heavier nucleus. If you look at it, it's the opposite of nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is when a heavy nucleus split into two smaller nucleus. But then this one is when um, two light nuclei join together to form a heavier nuclei. All right, for nuclear fusion to happen, so we have um, exa example, deuterium and tritium. When they join together, they become helium and some a neutron and also a huge amount of energy. And the condition for nuclear fusion to happen is high temperature and high pressure. And of course, scientists have been trying to replicate the nuclear fusion process on Earth. Uh, I will link up a description, a video in the description, so you can watch it to you know enhance your interest. But that's how the sun got its energy. And at this temperature, uh, why this process can create so much energy is because usually it's very hard to put these two components together. And you know because all the atoms are ionized and they have no electrons they have been removed and they're all positive nuclear and negative electrons so because light charges repel each other so it's very hard for them to merge together for instance two nuclei it's very hard for them to merge together it requires a very high temperature and high pressure but then when these two elements here eventually merge together they release tons of energy and the mass of the final nucleus is slightly less than the combined mass of the initial, meaning this one is slightly less than it because some of the mass is converted into energy. And that leads us to the famous formula E equal to mc square. So the energy release is big because um, m, the um, mass loss here from the fusion, when it's converted to energy, it will be multiplied by the speed of light to the power of 2. All right, so that's why um, the sun can produce tons of energy and um, scientists have been trying to replicate the entire nuclear fusion process, which in, involving have two lighter nuclei formed, merged together to produce a larger nucleus with tons of energy. So let's look into some of the faster questions for this chapter. Which energy resource does not use the sun as the source of its energy? Hydroelectric, it uses because it causes the water to evaporate and then it, when it rains, water flow, you create electricity. Wind is the same thing. Um, the sun causes convection current. Um, nuclear, nuclear, let's skip this, nuclear. Well, we know that coal is also a form of um, energy coming from the sun because um, it's from dead living things and dead living things accept the sunlight. So by the, using this, all this information, we know that nuclear is the only one that does not come from the sun. Great. Okay? So the answer is C. Next one, listed below are some of the energy sources, which of the following are renewable? Wind powering a turbine, wind is renewable. Water falling through an hydroelectric is again renewable. Alcohol made from crops which have been grown for burning in a biomass generator. So biomass, again, is renewable. Oh, uranium as nuclear fuel, this is not renewable. So my answer is W, X, Y, C, C. All right. So. Last question, which energy resource involves splitting 
heavy nuclei, we know that it's nuclear fission. Whereas fusion is when two coming together to form a bigger one. So that's not fusion. So the answer is A. And that's about it for this chapter. So this chapter we learn about where energy comes from and what are different forms of energy, renewable, non-renewable, and how most of the energy that we use today, they actually come from the sun. And I'm going to end this video. I'll see you next in the next video. Goodbye.